Can you explain the differences between style and design? Mm. Styling is one aspect of design. It's just one small component. Think about it this way. Think about it. You hear about stylists, like um, celebrity stylists, those that are dressing you for the red carpet. And what do they do is they go out there and they shop. They're really good shoppers. They shop in places that you have no access to. And they put together a combination of clothes and, and uh, accessories and shoes that no one imagined should go together. That's kind of what a stylist does, whether they're styling furniture or styling a computer accessory. Is what they're taking together is a bunch of co colors, materials, components, and things, combining them together and making a product. But there's no design in that. In the design, there's no invention part of that. So there's nothing that is sort of like user focused in that. It's all about creating a certain look, a certain style, a certain uh, message, or a certain brand image. It's in not that, about the user. Independent of everything else, they're not considering the needs of the, the real needs of the consumer. They're not considering the needs of manufacturing, the limitations of manufacturing. Right. Um, they're not considering any psychology of who's going to buy it, the demographics of who's going to buy it that's in, and at certain levels. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with styling. Right. Don't get me wrong. There's a great place for it. There's a lot of stylists out, you know, if you go to these design houses that are doing, you know, large communities or helping you style your interior of your home, they're helping you make smart choices with materials mm -hmm. and smart choices with flooring and make sure everything coordinates together and looks good. So there is a, a great service being provided by stylists. But if you've only got a stylist designing a product that you're making that's a problem right the best designers really understand how things are manufactured they understand the limitations of manufacturing and they understand how to get the most out of those manufacturing techniques and limitations the most style out of it as well right. <laughs> so, so it, it's so. it's a difference between uh, balancing in a holistic way all the different factors that go into making a product yeah what it function ends up being form aesthetics mm -hmm. yeah. for designer label brands who's really behind all those designs mm. well Good i question. think that the big thing is that you need the definition between brand and design so you know you buy martha stewart cindy crawford kathy ireland uh, Cynthia Raleigh, Michael Graves, you buy any of those things and they carry a brand identity with them. Now some of them have a better design background. Um, Martha Stewart and arguably her organization, and we know that intimately because we've worked with her a company before, they have designers in that organization, industrial designers who care about how the products are made and how it happens. But that but the even that designer, has some Martha Stewart, is not designing those products. She's set up a quality requirement, style requirement, right. and her people carry yeah. that out. So, you know, but they have a quality level, and, and so you're getting something special for that brand. So if you believe in Martha Stewart, and we do, but if you believe in Martha Stewart and her brand, you know, there's a level of expectation of design quality, design style, material quality. You get all of that from that. So they are providing a tremendous service, but there are a lot of brands out there that are just names. So they're just celebrity names that they slap on a brand of a product they were already buying in China anyway. They just figure if they put that, that known name on there, that celebrity, then what happens is, is that you'll just buy it. You and will so recognize you're not getting... it, you'll feel more comfortable about it, and you will buy it. But in reality, it's costing the consumer more because there is a 3 4 5% of the cost of that product that is doing nothing but paying for that licensed brand. Right. So what we do differently it's, is that we actually yeah. design and develop all the products that we're associated with. But our we're hidden. So like mm -hmm. you don't see our designer name on it very often. Sometimes you do, but mm -hmm. um, you know there's a couple of club products where our pictures are on there and our our name brand is on there. But it's not as common. And what is more common is for us to be behind the scenes doing the actual real design work to make sure that the users love it, make sure it's got all the highest quality possible, make sure you're packing in as much features as possible that the users care about. Um, and then what ends up happening is is that that gets sold by under some company brand name. 
So, so the irony is sometimes you'll have a product that doesn't have a, a well-known brand name that's actually a better designed product right. and a better value for the consumer than the ones that have a well-recognized national brand. Right. So that the, the real tip to the consumer is don't buy the brand unless you absolutely love the product. Just because you know somebody's picture is on the box doesn't mean that it has anything to do with what they have in their home or what they buy. They are being, I mean, it, it's a fee. They're being paid a fee to do that. Mm -hmm. So it's commercial. 